This is Bishop Craig in Lansing and in the basement. And this is Take One Daily for Monday, the 30th of March. Peace be with you. So I read, Kathy read to me this morning, a piece posted by my colleague, um, Bishop Kristen Kempel, who is the bishop in parts of Washington and Idaho. And she is telling us to pace ourselves. Uh, she is telling us to um, demand that uh, pastors rest. She is telling her church members to be ready for the church to be really different um, when the pandemic ends. Uh, people that we that we worship with might be gone. Um, the president, President Trump, um, this weekend seems to have gone from we're going to be open by Easter uh, to we need to keep our country closed through April so that the deaths are limited to 100,000 people. 100,000 people, that's, that's a University of Michigan football Saturday in Ann Arbor. The big house is full. Um, caused me a sleepless night. And so um, in the interest of pacing ourselves, and as I've said, I, I want to be a good relief pitcher uh, when our stars, our starters get tired, uh, Chelsea and I keep watching the numbers and the numbers for these uh, take one daily videos continue to decline. We are going to step away this week. Um, you'll see the take one video tomorrow. Next week, um, I will preach Holy, Holy Week sermons all week. Um, and they will come out at four o'clock every day. We're, I'm recording those this week. And then we'll see after Easter where we are um, and if they're as interested in these daily videos. Um, if I could give any advice to me and to you and to us, uh, it would be that we need to all take a deep breath and maybe to raise our gaze from our immediate needs um, to what's going on in our country, in our world. Kind of step back and take a, a bigger perspective. Um, so um, the question of how we record church attendance when we're doing online services isn't really a pressing question, I don't think. Um, you know, if your attendance goes from a hundred on a Sunday in person to 12,000 virtually because everyone's watching you, good for you. Um, but, you know, the church is not going to rise and fall by accurate attendance records. We've been padding those numbers for years. So I guess I wouldn't worry about that. Um, I understand that congregational conflicts can feel like the most pressing need, um, especially when... Um, especially when everything else seems out of control. And we will certainly help you deal with congregational conflicts. Um, but, you know, things will not be getting back to normal. So, um, so we may want to take a deep breath there. I know that in um, lots of um, parts of our church, the question of virtual communion has arisen. I, I begun to think of it as how do we do communion in a time of crisis. And lots of bishops are quick to provide answers, and um, I am not. Um, and we could have a long conversation about why I'm not. If there's one thing I have learned as a bishop, it's whenever I make an exception, somebody turns it into a rule, and then it becomes a precedent by which I am bound. So I am, I'm really slow to make exceptions. Um, I'm also um, curious and concerned about how any decisions we make about virtual communion or communion in a time of crisis impact our relationship with our, with our uh, Lutheran World Federation partners and our ecumenical partners and um, because that has some real implications if we and the Episcopalians, let's say, are not on the same page anymore, that affects places like two churches in, in Kentwood. So I worry about those kind of things. 
Um, I used to tell my students that when they made pastoral decisions, they should consider a three-legged stool. One leg was what scripture says. One leg is what the church and theology says, church tradition, and one is the pastoral response. And, and all three legs of the stool need to be kept regularly even or the stool will collapse. So um, in, in crisis, we, we all want to do what is helpful and eliminate suffering and pain. And so the pastoral leg of the stool gets really long. And, and so some of us need to be responsible to the other two legs of the stool. Um, and that's what I'm trying to do. So I told you that I am taking a Eucharistic fast. I, I'm feasting on um, the, the Christ's real presence in the Word. And that's really become very powerful, especially in the last few days as I'm working on Holy Week sermons. Um, I'm really getting into it. And um, it's almost like, leave me alone, I'm in the Bible. And I think, and, and I'm with Jesus. And there's a very um, rich experience there that I invite you into. Uh, one of our retired pastors said, to, this would be a good time for pastors to do their Greek word studies. Um, so I invite you to do that. I, you know, Greek is not my best thing. Um, but I want you to know that I am giving thought um, to how we do communion in a, in a time of crisis. And I'm not ready to come forward with an answer yet, but it is on my mind and in my heart. And um, maybe I'll be able to give it some writing, thinking, praying time um, next week during Holy Week. But for now, I'm sticking with the Eucharistic fast. So um, because I'm beginning to get asked questions, I wanted to provide those answers, at least let you know where I am right now. I hope this is helpful. Um, and I guess um, I hope we can can lift our heads and look at the big picture. And I hope that um, we can be fervent in prayer. And um, I hope that you will um, stay home and stay safe and save lives. And um, I pray that you know that Jesus is in the house with you. Um, and if you need me, please call. 517-321-5066, extension 101. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we have a feeling that things are going to get worse before they get better. Be with us in the pain and the uncertainty. Bless the most vulnerable. Protect our health care workers and their families. Attend to essential employees who must be out and about. Be with us in our homes. We are, if you will, um, cloistered. And for generations, your monks and nuns have found you in the cloister. Reveal yourself to us. Be present in tangible ways. And sustain us until the day when we can be together again as a foretaste of the resurrection, indeed, as an experience of resurrection. Mercifully assist us as we turn the corner into Holy Week and bless our contemplation of those mighty acts by which you redeem us and the world. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen.